Hi! In the last video we talked about side 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 triangle congruence. Today we're going to talk about side angle side. Side is congruent to that side and this side is congruent to that side. So if you actually, if we drew the third side and we'd have two triangles, would we have congruent triangles? I know it seems pretty obvious but we have to check these things. What do is side. Like does this combination of side angle side force the third side to be the same so you don't even have to check it. There's the third side for this guy and is that going to be the same length over here or could it be different? No, of course it can't be different. That's the point, right? So what we've got is a side congruent to another side we have an angle congruent to an angle, and then we have the second side congruent. So that gives us the SAS. But the important thing on this one, guys, is that that angle is between the two sides. That's what locked it in. Let's look at some examples. All right, this is two triangles that have side angle side congruence. You have one pair of congruent sides. You have an angle congruent to another angle and then you have a second pair of congruent sides but the important thing here is that the angle is between the two sides it's in the middle here side angle side side angle side let's look at another one here is our first pair of congruent sides we do have angle in the middle those are vertical angles those are always congruent by definition so they don't have to tell you that and then you have another pair of congruent sides. Side, angle, side, side, angle, side. We have one pair of congruent sides. We have been told that these two angles are congruent. Fabulous. And then you have that third side congruent to itself in the middle. That's be the reflexive property again. You do not need to be told that that's congruent to itself. That's a definition. All right, now here, these two look good, but there's a problem. There's a pair of congruent sides, and there's our pair of congruent angles, and there's our second pair of congruent sides. So side, angle, side, but not this one. You see how the angle is not between the two sides? It's not this angle. That's the one we would need. If you see SSA, it's not going to work. And how are you going to remember that? Just spell it backwards. <laughs> State what additional information is needed to prove that the triangles are congruent by side angle side. Well, I've got two angles here. The side in between, I know I'm going to get that. That's reflexive property. They're sharing that. So I need another side. And the side has, if you're going to use side angle side, that second pair of congruent sides has to sandwich the angle. So it's got to be this one and this one. Now you need to write that out. Go from the corner here where we have the angle G to F and H to T. Let's do it again. Remember side angle side. They're telling us about the angles and they're giving us one pair of congruent sides. So I need to sandwich in that angle. So I need this side, side angle side. And it's got to go with this guy. We want to go from K to J. That's got to be congruent y to z. Big problem, let's do the proof. Remember, you always mark up your diagram first. On a test or a quiz, they're not going to always tell you which congruency theorem you're going to use. I know we're going to use side angle side today, but you don't know that before you start when they just give you proofs. So go through this and see how the diagram marks up and then you can figure it out. So I've got AB is congruent to CB. So these two sides, I got that. BD bisects angle ABC. That's up here. So ABC is the big angle ABC. This line segment in the middle bisects it, which means these are congruent angles. Splits it in half. So there's my side, there's my angle, and then you get the freebie of the reflexive property because they're sharing a side. So there's your side angle side side angle side so that's going to be the theorem we use all right let's fill out the proof ab is congruent to cb because that is given 
Now you've put, usually we put the givens all in the front. There'll be times where I might save a given to use later in the proof, but right now I'm going to put them all up on the top. BD bisects angle ABC, and that is given. All right, well, what does that mean? Like, they had to tell us this, and it's because they told us that, that's how I figured out that these two angles were congruent to each other, and that's what I need to put in here. So it's going to be angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD. How do I know that? Well, they had to put, tell me that that was a bisector. So that's a definition of angle bisector. I cannot use the definition of angle bisector in a proof until some line before it I've stated that I know that that's a bisector, that BD bisects that angle. Now I can use it. The next thing I have is the one in the middle, right? The side in the middle. So BD is congruent to DB. That's because of reflexive property. So there's my side, there's my angle, and there's my side. And so I can say that the two triangles are congruent because of the side angle side congruency theorem. All right, that finishes what I'm going to talk about right now about side angle side theorem. There'll be more proofs coming in a video. I think we have to do a video at some point where I'm just doing proofs. The next video is going to be angle side angle. You'll find a link to it here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video. Bye.